Welcome to International Regulatory Frameworks for Climate Change and Environmental Management for 2019. So this course does two things. It tells the story of the major international environmental treaties since 1945, set within their political and historic context, and it builds your research and policy skills. So my name is Chris McGrath. I'm a barrister and I've taught the course for the last 10 years. Uh, most of my current work is on climate litigation uh, I'm working in Papua New Guinea on legal logging, so I'm a lawyer by profession. International law is uh, part of the bread and butter uh, work that I do on a daily, le on a day-to-day -day basis. So in outline, uh, I just want to keep this a really short welcome. I want to say, why is this course relevant to you in your career? And give you a quick summary of the course, the major components, the lecture week, assessment, and the, emphasize the field trip. So. First of those, why is international law relevant to you now in a period of seeming momentum for isolation and retreat from international agreements and institutions? We've got the idiot leading the United States and Brexit happening in Europe, dominating the news. And in that context, you can say, well, is an international environmental regulation in retreat? And I, I thought about this issue a lot in the lead up to the course and I really want to emphasize that the answer to that is no international environmental regulation isn't going away and it's relevant to you in your career because there's many problems that cannot be solved in isolation at a national level and these problems are going to outlast uh, President Trump they're going to outlast Brexit and they will continue for the whole of your career. So just turning on the news right now, or if you're facing a bushfire threat uh, right now, uh, in Australia we have catastrophic fires running along the East Coast and all the way across to WA. And uh, in the news there's been this clash uh, over whether global warming uh, is playing a role in those bushfires and, and the answer from a scientific level is a resounding yes that uh, hotter temperatures uh, drive drought and drive worse fires extremes and heat and so certainly climate change is playing a role in making the current bushfires worse so that's a simple scientific answer the politics in australia become murky because the current uh, federal government has made essentially a massive push in the last 20 years to try and delay any action, any meaningful action on climate change. So there's a lot of delays in the federal government and they don't want to recognise the problems that we face and the need for stronger action. So that's in the news right now and it's, it's not going away. So there's lots of problems that we, that is individual countries, can't solve alone. So those problems aren't going away and countries cooperate through international agreements like the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change because it's in their interest to do so to solve a common problem. That's the fundamental driver for international regulation and international environmental regulation. And that fundamental driver means that international law and policy, what, what in our course we'll call regulation, but law, policy, regulation, they're all, I just use them interchangeably. So international law and policy are very relevant to you and your future career, whether you're going to work in government, the private sector, or, or academic. You have many places you can go in your career, and international regulation is going to be relevant to you, and it's going to be protecting you for the whole of your life and the whole of your career. So learning about it is valuable. So in summary, what this course covers, um, the electronic course profile is available, it's got more detailed information. I don't want to repeat that. I'll cover it a bit in lecture one, but you guys are smart, you can read it, so you've got more detail there on course information, aims, learning resources, learning activities and assessment. But I just want to summarise, I think, the key points uh, for this welcome introduction to the course. The big picture, when you think of a course like this, think of teaching and learning in a complex um, course like this one, it's something like a game of chess. At least that's how I think of it. There's many pieces that are moving. And 
what I'm trying to do as the course coordinator and the teacher is to help you to learn and help you gain insight and engage you with this really, really important topic. And so there's multiple things that I'm doing and uh, your engagement in the course through lectures, through assessment is going to help you learn and understand um, this, this topic area. So there's multiple teaching strategies and methods that I'm using in combination and the main components are a set of lectures and that's in occurring in an intensive mode in week one of the summer semester so from the 25th to the 29th of November and in those lectures what I'm trying to do is tell the story of the major international treaties since 1945 set within their historic and political context and do it in an interesting and engaging way so that you can you can uh, in a short uh, amount of time get exposure to a lot of complex information but also in a framework that hopefully it makes sense to you you can see it, it resonates with you and you can remember key points of it as well for your future careers. So that's the lecture week and the recordings will be available for ex external students um, through that and you can you can watch them online. So the lecture week is a core component of the course. Assessment as well is a core component of helping you learn in this course and you might think Assessment is just about marks, but good courses use assessment for a lot more than marks. Assessment is actually, good assessment is about helping you to learn. So we're going to do three bits of assessment in this course to help you. The first is a research proposal. It's only worth 5%. It's due early. It's really just to help make sure you're on track with your topic for the research paper, because that's the major bit of assessment. So you have to essentially um, evaluate the implementation of an international regulatory framework in any country and make two or more policy recommend two or more recommendations for how uh, that implementation can be improved so you can choose any country in the world it can be any convention you might look at climate change you might look at fisheries you might look at biodiversity you might look at um, anything we cover ozone anything you like and uh, obviously, if you are from another country, you can choose your own country to make it relevant to you, your life experience, and also your future careers. So if you're from Indonesia, you can do a topic uh, looking at the in implementation of international environmental regulation in Indonesia. Or if you're from Chile, then obviously you can look at Chile. So the research paper uh, is a really important part of the course. Uh, and then the exam at the end. Uh, and there's heaps of information in the exam. The exam is uh, also about helping you to learn. And so it's worth 45%. Um, we do a couple of tutorials at the end of the semester to help you prepare for that. But the, f the first part of the course is really the lectures. And then we move into the research paper for the bulk of the course. And then uh, you come back, we'll come back to the exam and the preparation for it at the end of the course. Within the lectures, we're going to do two workshops to help you with your research paper, we're going to look at a, a workshop on research design and also a workshop on making good policy recommendations. So that's part of the lecture series uh, and in that intensive lecture week. And uh, I'd mention also the, the reason why there's an intensive lecture week is so that uh, you can go home for, for the summer holidays if you want to. So if you're not from Brisbane, uh, stick around for the lecture week and then head home. That's the way the course is designed, rather than having one lecture every week all through the summer semester so that you're tied to Brisbane. Uh, that's why we've put the lectures all in one week. So uh, in the lecture week, there's also a field trip to Springbrook, and I'm going to talk more about that in the next couple of slides. Uh, I mentioned already the tutorials at the end of the semester. So they're the main um, bits of the course, or the main teaching strategies and methods that I'm using in combination. So just briefly the field trip uh, it, whether you're internal or external uh, you can you're welcome to come on the field trip so it's a it's a great day uh, we go down to a world heritage area springbrook national park it's part of the gondwana gondwana rainforest of australia world heritage area and it's about two hours south of brisbane 
So we go down, this is where we get out of the bus and look out over this amazing vista and essentially the walk that we go on goes down into that valley. And here's a class from uh, years ago, uh, standing under the waterfalls that we walk under. So it's a great uh, day out, a great experience of this amazing World Heritage Area. There's a, a student from a few years ago as well from Indonesia. And a picture taken by a student uh, of of the walk so it's a, a really beautiful day out really encourage you to come along on that it's not there's no assessment associated with it it's really a day about we talk about you know how amazing world heritage is we go out and look at how amazing it is it's about the experience also this year i thought i'd do a twitter feed i uh, get with the times and um, i've always done um, on the discussion board i've put up um, posts about news items that are relevant to international environmental regulation but haven't seen a lot of people really using it so I thought I'd try a different format and try Twitter so I'm new to this and yeah you can I mean, if you're good at Twitter I'd love to uh, get your feedback on how I can improve it to make it more engaging and yeah I really want to bring home you see international environmental regulation in the news all the time or I do and you might notice it. I really want to just bring home to you and have a discussion about how this is happening all the time and it's relevant, you know, why our course is relevant is because it's all around us. You know, these things are important. Okay, any questions uh, you've got, email or call me. Um, I've got my UQ email. You're also welcome to call me on my mobile, 043 829 If you're internal or external, ex <laughs> internal or external, feel free to give me a call. Uh, other than that, I look forward to getting to know you during the course and I hope you enjoy the course. I, I think it's a great course. I hope you will too.